All right, let's. Uh... Give me a second. All right. Sorry about that. Can everybody hear me? People raising their hands. Yep. Good. All right. <laughs> Busy day. All right. So the um, let's talk about web pages, right? Uh, what are they useful for? How do they work? What can you do inexpensively? And let me just start off with uh, a little bit of discussion of what your options are, right? One option is um, you could create one for free or close to free. I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Number two, you could join a organization, a real estate company that gives you a web page. Um, number three, you could buy your own web page as well as a customized um, cu customer relationship management program. All right, I'll get it out. All right. Now, the I'm gonna in a few minutes go into what the free one looks like, but I want to cover what some of the other examples are. So I picked on a couple of agents that I've either worked with in the past or are in my profit share tree. This one is in Keller Williams. And I'm not saying this is the only website, but this is a typical looking kind of a Keller Williams website. You can do a search, right? You can do a search, you could log in. Um, there's a little bit of information, yeah, you know. Um, and I realize that there's probably others that could be, you know, uh, modified a little bit more. I didn't have spend a lot of time looking at different websites, but that's not un un unusual. Um, this is a website from an Intero agent that I also had worked with before. Let me just see. There he is. Hi, Eric. How you doing? Um, this is a typical real estate office kind of website. It's got property search, buying and selling tips about me, neighborhood news, and, and well, you could sign up. Um, this is what a typical Coldwell Banker agent website might look like. Um, hi, Annette, how you doing? Um, it's got to buy, it's got to sell. Uh, people can do a search. Uh, isn't that nice? They could, you know, they could click on it. All right. Now, the, the, the question is, all right, so why, why have a website, right? And in the old days, right, it's been a while, um, we wanted to have a, a website so that buyers could find homes to buy, right? And then um, they could go to my website, they could set up a search. Here, since we're doing, I'll show you a couple more. Let me find another one. Um, this is another agent website. I don't know who this one is. Oh, yes, this is a website. This is a paid for website. And by the way, I'm, I'm, mod, I'm closing this down and, mod, and moving to KV Core, but this is a, um, a website from a company called Evaluate. Um, it's a, a nice website. People can do searches. There's a blog, they post stuff for me. It's got information, it's got properties for sale. Um, this is $150 a month. Right, and it has an integrated customer relationship management system. It's got a few more choices up there. I'm just, you know, just going through some of the examples. Um, if you want to look at a really nice website, right? This is a, an. I've had agents when I was working up in the Santa Rosa area. Agents would say, "Hey, look at this website. I would like a website like this." Let me just get we go to the beginning. Uh, hi, Ginger. She's with Sotheby's up in the wine country. Nice looking website, right? Really nice looking website, beautiful pictures. Uh, there's ginger videos, testimonials. It looks very nice. And if, if you scroll to the very bottom, you can see that this website was created by a, custom, a company called Luxury Presence. Okay, that's really nice. How much? does a luxury presence website cost? Um, is this where I was going? Yeah, here we go. 
luxury present and probably inexpensive. Um, here we are, $5,000, $5,000 up front, um, but only, only about $500 a month, right? Only about $500. Am I sharing the screen? Yes, can't people see my screen? Is that, am I the only one that can see the screen? Everybody else, can, people can say they can see my screen. So I'm going to assume people, somebody just texted, you know, are you sharing your screen? Uh, and now I get a, we can't see it. So let me try this again. All right, sorry about that. How about now? Can you see the screen now? I don't know why, but sure. All right. So why don't we, we'll do a do-over, right? So what do what do real estate agents' websites look like, right? So this is a example of a Keller Williams website, and there may be more options than this, but you can see this, and I'm sure you could have added stuff, but this is just sort of a plain search website. This is a website from an agent at Intero, and you'll notice up at the top, it says intero.com, just like at the Keller Williams website, it says kellerkw.com. What that means is that these websites are subdomains. In other words, they don't actually have a domain for that particular website. Um, make sure, yes, everybody can see it now. Um, this is what a Kobo Banker agent website might look like. And again, there may be more customization. I didn't spend a lot of time on this. But if you look at it, this one, which is very typical for Coldwell Banker in Century 21, um, notice it's a Coldwell Banker is, is part of the URL. You could click on buy, you could click on sell. All of these allow people to do searches. All right, then, so this is a basic, what do you get if you join a big real estate company, a big franchise website, people can do searches. Right. If you want to look at something a little more upscale, right, this is a website from an agent up in Napa Valley. You can see it's, uh, you know, nice video movement, uh, nice looking website, right? See the fire crackling. You can view all homes, right? There's Ginger, how you doing? And, you know, it's a nice looking website. And this particular website is made by a company called Luxury Presence. And they're, they, according to Follow Up Boss, which is researching at different websites, what they say is that um, Luxury Presence costs, I lost it now, $5,000 as a setup fee. Um, and $5,000, right? Here we go, Luxury Presence is number four on their list. I was sort of busy. So how much does this cost? $5,000 as a startup fee and $500 a month, right? Now, the reason, um, so uh, we'll be talking about agent searches and things like that uh, as we go along, all right? So, the question is, what is your website good for? What are you going to use it for? Now, why would somebody have a $5,000 website, $500 a month? And the answer is, is because they're dealing with high-end homes, luxury properties. And yeah, and I actually have heard an agent talking who said that he took his his last $3,000 because he was going to be working in the and he wanted to do the luxury market and he used it to buy a website, right? That was a few years ago. It probably wasn't too much different than this. And the idea of spending that kind of money on a website <clears throat> is, is that if you're talking to luxury clients and they spend a little time looking at your website, they're going to be thinking there's no way this, um, this person isn't selling real estate, right? I mean, because look at it and it's an image and it matches the image of the luxury buyer. But you understand uh, a knockoff version of something like this will cost about three grand, right? This one is a really nice one. It costs about $5,000. That's all, just $5,000. Now, one of the, so 
let me just make sure I'm, I, I'm, I'm a little scattered, so I'll make sure I can say this. Why do you have a website and what value do you get from it and what value do your customers get from it? Let's start with customers, right? Now, the most practical function of a real estate agent website is to find homes that are for sale. Right. That would be the most practical function. However, in today's day and age, most buyers have heard of Redfin and they've heard of Zillow, right? They've heard of them. What's the, what's the difference? Well, let me give you an example, right? So my website, which is from a company called um, Evaluate, um, my website has an IDX search. So let's just say I want to find a home in San Jose. Right. I, I want to find a home in San Jose and I want it to be a single family home. And sometimes I have to just do this. All cities. Um, San Jose. Oops. Right. San Jose. All right. And let it rip. And how many is it going to show me? Um, sometimes that's not as easy to see. 159 right? 159. That's what it's going to show me. So that's why 159. And the answer is, is because those are, you can see the MLS listing logo, an IDX website that you normally would get will only show the listings that are part of the MLS you're a member of, right? That's all that it'll show. It doesn't show listings from other MLSs. For example, and let's 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 continue with this for a moment. Let's say instead I went to uh, Paragon, which is I'm I'm in the uh, MLS listings program. Paragon is the software for the combined California MLS, and I'm going to do a search for residential properties. And I'm going to look for active listings, right? And I'm going to look for single family homes. And I want them to be in San Jose, right? Because I guess I was typing okay. San Jose, all right? Now, how many? There's 191. Now, that's more that showed up on my personal website. Why? And the answer is, is because the combined MLS search is not just searching the properties that are in MLS listings that are in San Jose. It's just searching Bay East and San Francisco Association of Realtors and MetroList and Barris. It's searching a whole bunch of different MLSs. So it's found more. If I am using the basic matrix search and I'm looking for active single family homes and I want it to be in San Jose and I click on OK and notice down here it says 220 matches. Now that's actually even more than the combined MLS. If we were doing this live I would be offering a prize to anybody who could tell me one why, why would this number in this search be higher than the program that is searching all the MLSs. And typically what I would give to anybody who had the right answer, there's two kind of answers, one main one, but one possible one, there's two answers. Um, you'd get a free gift certificate to the dollar store, right? You can buy anything, anything you wanted. And one of the reasons why this number is higher is because the MLS started to do something over here, which is members only. And what members only means, if you're showing members only, then you're showing coming soons and things like that, right? But that doesn't mean your clients are going to see it. It doesn't mean there's really 220. If we click on do not show uh, or not, how about that? So the, what this is only showing now are the ones that everybody else can see. Notice that's 188, right? Now in the combined MLS, it's 191. Not a big difference, right? Not a big difference. But there are actually more listings for sale than Matrix knows about. <laughs> now, Matrix, by the way, starting at the end of January, is going to start to show the listings from the California Regional MLS 
And when you do a search, you'll be able to see those as well, as well as Bay East, you can see. However, that does not show up in an IDX, right? In other words, on your website, if somebody does a search, then they're not going to see all of those listings because they're only going to see the ones that are part of your of your site, right? That the, your MLS, only your MLS. So where I'm going with this is what's the best way to find homes for sale? Well, let's say the client went to Redfin and they're looking for San Jose homes for sale. They're clicking on the house, how many San Jose single family homes has Redfin found? And I know the numbers here someplace because I've done this before, but it's like for sale, active, sold, property facts, home amenities. Oh, here we are down here, 203. So my IDX showed, I forget the number, 150, something like that. Running a search in the MLS matrix showed 188. Running the search in the and combined MLS search is 191. But Redfin has a few more, 203. How come? Because they're searching every MLS in California, right? Redfin has, Redfin has joined all of them. So they're picking up a few more listings. These are homes that are in San Jose with a for sale sign. But because the agent put it in the Tahoe MLS rather than in our MLS, Redfin knows because they're a member of that MLS, but Matrix doesn't know and the combined MLS doesn't know and your typical real estate agent website, it doesn't see it either. What about Zillow? What about Zillow? Right? I don't think I've done this yet, but if we were to say, all right, I'm looking for homes in San Jose, California that are for sale and when I what I only want when I go over here is uh, what I want is where, where's more home? Maybe I've already sort of set this up. 670 bed home type. Here we go. And I always hate this. You have to unclick everything. So we're done. 274. All right, 274. Why? And one of the reasons is sometimes different programs include contingent or pending in it um but zillow thinks there's 274 homes for sale in san jose 204 redfin's number is probably more accurate because zillow wants to pad it and have more properties so it looks like it looks better so where i'm going with this is if the reason that you're going to have your own website is so people can find homes for sale you need to understand that that search on your website might be the worst property search that they're going to find, right? That could be the worst one, right? Because Redfin is better and Zillow is better. And if you ran a search through the MLS or through the combined MLS, you'd find more properties, right? And plus, we're in a, in, a, in a state where most people aren't even gonna bother to go to your website to find a home for sale. They're just going to, use the app that's on their phone all right so and even though i said that i know agents are going people say i want people to be able to search for homes some people want to search for homes all right fine do it but my point is is that if i have a buyer who i think is serious about buying a home and they're not tech savvy they don't have redfin and zill and by the way i haven't met one of those in a long time Right, it doesn't have Redfin and Zello, but if they're not doing that and they're relying on me to find them a home, I'm going to set up a Redfin and Zillow search that matches the search that I'm going to put in the MLS, and I'm going to use the combined MLS search in order to find them the home. But I'm going to also do a Redfin and Zillow just because I don't want to miss anything. And once I find it, I can find out where where is it? It's listed in a different MLS. I can find out information about it. So I mean, I just want to cover, you know, how how important is the IDX function, and um, and you could put it in you could put it in yourself, right? So if that's the reason, then um, I don't know. There, I'm going to show you another alternative, which is to get people to tell you what they're looking for, so that you can help them find it. The other reason that people have websites is information about the buying and selling process, newsletters, download, you know, how to tips for buying a home. These are not used very often, 
right? I've been doing this for a while. I, as you can see, I've got active websites. Hardly anybody ever downloads them, right? And it's just not a very big thing. There's just too much information on the internet about all this. You don't get very much. Another reason that people might have a website is so people can say, I want to sell my home and fill out a form and send it to you. They hardly ever do that, right? I mean, it's just hardly ever a thing. Plus, we could do it ourselves if we wanted to. So why else do we have a website? Because it's expected of us, you know, um, maybe, right? Um, and if we are trying to look good for home sellers, because we're a listing agent, right? Then maybe having a nice looking website is going to be useful in convincing the seller to work with us. But that website is probably not the one you got for free from your company. Right, you understand? What does that website look? Well, we'll go back. What does that website look more like this? Right, looks more like this. So, um, what's happened is I've seen over the years is originally the websites were designed to help buyers, but a lot of buyers' agents don't even have a website, right? Because their clients have Zillow, they have Redfin, they're letting them know what properties they want to see, right? They just don't even need one. So let's talk about what are your options, right? What are your options for a website? And what I promised today is to show you a way of creating a free website. And I've, I've done this before. I have some samples, but I'm going to do one from scratch. Now, this is going to be recorded. And if you're interested, I'd be happy to, uh, you, you can have the link. Um, and... Uh, and then I'll do something else. Let me do one more thing before I actually show you how to create the website. What is another, what, why was I paying $150 for that other website when I know obviously the IDX isn't as good as Redfin and so on? And the answer is I was doing it as a lead generation platform. That evaluate website is a lead generating website in the fact that you can run ads and pay per click ads and people go to it and then there's follow up systems and stink and things like that. That's a customer relationship management program where the website is a tool in an overall internet lead generation strategy. All right. So what um, what are those what does that cost? All right, let me see if I already opened this up. So there are lead generation websites, which by the way, the ones that you get from Keller Williams and Global Banker and Intero, they, they, it ain't one of those, right? Ain't one of those, right? They, the, the sites that are used for lead generation have landing pages or squeeze pages and lead magnets. And in that system, we're not really concerned, do we have all the listings? Because the listings are simply bait right, that we're going to use to trail in front of people to get them to bite on it so that they can go into our system. What do these systems kind, what do they cost? Now, Property Base is a really nice program. You get a website, there's a CRM, it, it's really kind of, it's, it's really pretty nice. How much does it cost? Well, it costs $89 a month just for the CRM, right? That doesn't give you a web page. If you want a matching web page with the IDX integration, it's only $400 a month, which is a bargain compared to the $500 a month that the luxury present wants. Real Geeks, Real Greek Geeks also has lead generating websites, really good ones, nice ones. What do they cost? Much cheaper, only $199 a month. Of course, you have to pay $350 just for a setup fee. Right, the 150 I was paying for evaluate is just sort of in the low level of all this. And by the way, if you want help with Facebook and pay per click, you can see oh, that's a that's a bit extra. Chime, that's another integrated CRM website, very 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 nice. It's only 499 dollars a month. All right, if you're just a solo agent, that's it. Um, we use at at EXP, a program called KV Core, right? And uh, you have uh, Chime, already did that one. I'm going to close that one. See you later, Ginger. Um, KV Core, uh, that's Luxury Presence, as a standalone, I'm going to go buy it. I'm going to 
post some of these just so I can find the stuff. Um, I'm just, I want to buy KV Core, what would that cost? And KV Core is a, a, a software you can buy. You get a website, it's landing pages, squeeze pages, all that kind of stuff. It's a nice CRM. It's $499 a month. Now, if you join a large organization like I'm EXP, I'm migrating my $150 a month website with Evaluate over to KV Core because it's actually got more whistles and bells. And I'm going from $150 a month. Well, actually, I don't have to pay $499 because I only pay $85 a month as a monthly fee. Now, just to make sure we, we're all on the same idea here, for most real estate agents, they're not going to do anything with this anyhow, right? They're not going to um, evaluate, keep saying evaluate, uh, eval, elevate, elevate, sorry, elevate. I was just saying, um, and about the list, um, th this is a, uh, a list from, if you just Google search, real estate agent websites. You can see Boomtown is 750. There's a bunch of them. It's Elevate, not Evaluate. Evaluate is actually commercial software, but uh, I don't know. So um, you can uh, Google search and do your own research. Right? I'm, I'm not going to spend too much more time on the things I didn't want to talk about, but um, um, Elevate. Not even so. For many real estate agents, you know, they look in the mirror and they know I'm not really going to use a CRM. I'm really not. Right? You know, I I barely can make my phone work. You know, um, I don't want to learn anything. You know, I I want to have a website because I it's expected of me. My company's going to give me one. It, it's not going to really do any good for me. I'm not really going to get any leads from it. But hey that's a good cutoff. I don't want to, you know, I don't, I, I just don't want to bother. Even Compass, right, which has, you know, good technology. There was a recent article in Barron's because Compass was going to take over the world because their technology was better than everybody else's technology. And I remember thinking most real estate agents aren't going to use it. And in this article in Barron's, which is very recent, the they were complaining at Compass that they were having trouble getting their employees to use their technology. Right, so out of a hundred real estate agents, how many of them, how many of you guys are going to be serious about generating leads on the internet such that you want to have an integrated website, right? With the CRM and landing pages and lead magnets and all that kind of stuff. My experience has been most agents aren't going to do that because it involves, well, I know I'm not supposed to curse, especially, you know, four letter words, you know, and things like that on the, you know, being recorded, but it involves work, work. I, I know uh, it, it involves effort. I know that's not four letters, but work is. It, it means you're going to have to learn something new. You're going to have to watch maybe some videos and go to a class and 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 spend time on getting it all ready and going and that eliminates most real estate agents right i know you guys are all different you're special i mean you, you, you've showed up for this right so what i want to do let me see what this is uh, thank you for confirming that mike we appreciate it um i know you guys are, are at least taking the time most real estate agents don't learn how to you know to, to do very much you know so what are your options? You can create a Wix website, there's a Squarespace website, but what I promise to do is to show you how to create a free website, free, right? No hosting fees, free website. And the, we're gonna do this through our friend Google. All right, and again, this is being recorded, I'm gonna slow down. But as you might expect, if you were to Google search how to create a Google site, you would find quite a few responses, but I'm gonna walk you through it slowly. I'm in Google Drive. I'm gonna click on new. I'm gonna to go to more. And one of the choices is Google Sites, right? One of the choices. I'm gonna click on that. And it's gonna create a Google Site. 
and it's going to spin around. So page title, I'm going to call it basic website, right? Basic website, I, I'm something, something nice. Um, I could add a logo, right? So if I want to, I, I could find one, I could upload one. So if I go to, where's, how about one of my, uh, how about that one, right? Just for fun, and so oh, popped up a logo, pretty easy. Um, uh, the background image, I don't really like that. So I'm going to upload an image. So let's say I'm, I'm gonna go to other pictures that I have. Uh, and how about, I don't even know what that looks like, right? But so I could have gone, that's a, a, a little Christmassy, maybe that's a little, you know, let me just uh, go for something different. So if I click on select image, it's gonna give me some preset choices, color, backgrounds, and things like that. If I had a URL of an image, or I could just search for an image, uh, home interior, right? which I didn't spell right, but because Google knows what they're doing, they probably have figured it out. So uh, I'm, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this part, but you find an image you like, and you give it, you let Google have it, right? Voila, right, we have an image. Now, um, I also, doesn't look like much, right? I, I could, call this uh, Mike's, uh, Mike's, right, right, call it whatever you want. Over here, I could increase, I could include pages. I, I could pick out different themes if I wanted it to look better, differently. I could pick on these, you know, I could, you know, whatever, you know, you get some choices. I go to insert, I can put things in here. Right, and some of the things that I could put in, notice there's different layouts, a picture, there's text, there's two pictures and text underneath, two pictures, right? Do I get to design anything I want a little more difficult, but I can start putting things in. And to give you an idea of what this is going to look like when we're done is, uh, Show you. What it's going to look like when we're done is something that looks like this, right? And so I'm going to click on preview and I've just used the plain background. Now this is a slider, right? Notice the images change. I've got services. I've got those things there. How, how did you do that, right? Notice find your home value instantly um, I'm not sure that link is working right now, but you can, this is a hyperlink, right? And it would take me, let's see if that's been, yeah. And so what is your home worth now? This is a instant, you know, find out what your home is worth, um, really easy to put in, right? I'll show you how. So how would we do something like that? Well, let me see, we're over here. This is picture, and text, right? That's all that that is. Do we have anything that looks like that? Sure, how about that, right? Picture and text. So here we can select an image. We could use a YouTube video. Um, it's possible to create a slider, which is where there's a carousel of images. I can upload images. Uh, I can start putting in text, right? Just, just go for it. And you can see that, you know, let me close this for now. That's what I did here, right? Only instead of just having static pictures, I had a slider, right? If you want to know how do you create a slider in Google Sites, my suggestion is you go to Google and you type in, how do I create a slider in Google Sites? And they're gonna show you how. So how did you create this, this thing at the bottom? Well, I would then take, I think there were three, I drag it there, pick out pictures, put in text, and all of this could be linked to something, right? It all could be linked to something. So I can create a background image. Now, one of the things you may have heard me talk about in previous classes is about getting your own domain. 
and I use Workplace, which is used to be called G Suite, which means I have MichaelDevlin.com. Now, what that does for me is my when I create a website like this, and um, that, by the way, is the let me go back. What it looks like real life. If I um, when I publish this site what the URL is going to have is my domain will be part of the URL. And one of the nice things about Google Sites is, is that Google will host it for you. So let's do a couple more things. That's, so why is that important? Well, if you're at Century 21 and Coldwell Banker and you're using one of their standard sites, it's probably going to say Century 21 and Coldwell Banker in the URL and then it'll have a slash and then it might have your name and so what you have is a subdomain that is part of their site that also means if you leave your site goes right kw.com means that your website is a kw website and if you leave your your website is gone uh you want to buy websites just to make sure that if you move offices you don't lose your website sure you can do that but remember you know that that's going to cost you a minimum of probably $100 a month or some that could be done for 50, but there's an expense. This is free, right? This is free. And because Google is hosting your website, you don't have to worry about what if you move, if I want to change the logo, I can just change the logo, right? So that's how we I created those things. I just typed in stuff, right? Picked up pictures um, and just put those things in right so other things notice i have some a blog and stuff like that so i have a subscription to something called keeping current matters and it's got articles there i am why not wait until spring to make a move three must do's when selling your home uh people can fill out stuff nobody ever does all right nobody ever does right why do i do that i do it because um, I don't know, mostly for, mostly I'm doing this for just recruiting and having a presence, right? Mostly that's what I'm doing. But I will show you, let's say, and this is just an easy thing to do. This is what, ooh, that website looks like. Oh, I didn't want to do that. But anyhow, um, let me go back. Uh, really wasn't what I wanted, but if I click on one of my links, that was probably the best one. What this is, is a frame. Uh, does it help with organic SEO, I'm being asked? The answer is yeah, because first of all, this is a Google product. Let me just go back, I'm not gonna, I'll show you an example. Um, this is a Google product. And Google likes Google products, right? So Homekeeper, by the way, is another site that I have that has uh, do-it-yourself tips. People can search for a plumber or a handyman. This is part of a vendor thing. There's usually something on the side. Uh, here are some articles that appear. And if you wanted, you could attach a blog, right? And I haven't this isn't something that I always use, but where did this blog come from? It comes from a company called Blogger, which is a free blog that you can get from Google, right? So Google will let you have a blog and Google will let you um, have a website and all that other kind of stuff. I have a tab that says home selling. Now here is that, tell me what your home is worth, which is something I got from listings to leads. This is an automated system, nobody ever fills it out, right? I'm just saying. But let's look at home search, because that's what I know a lot of you, I gotta have a search. This is a search, which by the way, reminds me every time to turn it off. Those are a couple of recent listings, right? Um, and this is a property search, and so I'll show you how to add an IDX search to a Google site, how about that? It's going to cost something, right? To have a Google site doesn't cost anything. Right, the um, Google Forms doesn't cost anything. Google Drive doesn't necessarily cost anything. But let's talk about, let's say I really wanna have people, an IDX search. 
So what you would do is when you log into the, your MLS, and if you're not in the world of matrix and MLS listings, it'll look a little bit different, but there's something called the store, right? And we're gonna scroll down and then you're going to see that I've already purchased the product here. Um, and MLS listings has MLS listings IDX products. Click on that. And this is going to pop up. And by the way, they'll sell you um, a very plain looking website. They will. Um, they'll sell you a IDX plugin for WordPress. That's a whole nother class. And then this is the one I use. If you click on more, there's this package and there's a demo site. And I have to think about how I log in to uh, MLS listings websites. Pricing, it's $15 a month. And it's not really giving me the option because I've already done this. But let me just see if it'll let me in. Uh, maybe, maybe this is what I need to do. Uh, I don't know where my dashboard is right now. I, I it's not something I, I really use very much. So once if you do this what they're going to do is give you a link right this is what i've got this first one here it's called a framed idx and because i've already ordered it it's really not you know being helpful to let me you know modify it or find it here maybe it's under my products how about that here we go this looks better mls listings idx there you go under my products you can see I don't come in here a lot, and that's because people don't usually use the IDX search, right? So this is, and this will show you're going to get to see all the leads, all the leads. Look at all those leads. Woohoo! Look at all that. So um, yeah. So anyhow, this is the list: export leads, low activity leads, listings, reports, setup website. Is this what I want? Now back, 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 back. Too much. How about setup? Um, over here, IDX page links, here we go. So finally, I found it. So $15 a month, I get all of these, including a home valuation request, right? Including a mortgage calculator, including mobile links and things like that. Let's just, as because this is more of a, you know, show you what's possible. Let's say that on my new website, I want, a home valuation request. So I'm going to go back to Mike's basic site and I'm going to add a page. And the page I'm going to add, I'm going to here. Now, let me go back here before we go to this. Um, uh, I really didn't want to do that. Yeah, let me just make sure I'm going to delete this. Right. So I'm going to go slower. I'm going to hover, add a page. Notice it gives me two choices. One of them is a link. And the other one is a new page. So if I pick a link, what it's going to do is hyperlink it. So when somebody clicks on the page, they go to some other outside website. However, Google is going to warn people that by clicking on your page, they're being taken to an outside website. Easiest thing to do is to frame it. So you click on new page, uh, home value, right? Uh, and it's custom path, is that what I want? That's not right, let me just do that. Click on done, click on done. So here I have a page, it says home values, it's got nothing there. I'm gonna to go to insert and I'm going to click on M embed. And so some of the products that you can find to include in a website have actual HTML code. If that were true, I would be pasting it in here. But remember, they gave me a link, a URL. And once I do that and I click on insert, it should what happened by URL, enter URL, whole page, show dynamics. This should work. There we go. 
So here's evaluation request form. It's got my featured listings. You know, I can make it a little bit bigger if I want to. People can fill out the form. Now, by the way, and I usually, you know, size it so that, oops, we don't need that. I can pull it down. Uh, anyhow, you can make it bigger, but people can scroll down and fill it up. So, and it's got, you know, some words at the bottom. It takes a couple of minutes. I got it. There you go. All right. It's got my featured listings. It's got a form people can fill out. All right. Cool. All right. So if I wanted to create a, and, and I'm going to, when I click on um, publish, uh, I'm going to notice what it's doing. This is useful to see. The URL. Now, Google is going to host this website for me at no additional charge. Right? Um, and, and But because I have a G Suite account, which means my domain is there, the URL is going to be michaeldevlin.com forward slash Mike Sites, right? Why not? And when I click on publish, I, I, I have a website. Now, let's say I also wanted to do a property search, right? And um, so I'm going to click on pages. So I have a page that says home values. Let's see. Uh, can we have more than one? Um, gee, I don't know. Um, these are all the websites that I've created so far with Google, right? And they haven't told me to stop. My understanding is there is no limit to how many of these sites you can create, no limit, right? Um, and I have a bunch of them, many, many, many sites, yeah, I know. And by the way, I'll tell you, one of the reasons I use Google Sites is I use it sometimes for landing pages. So let's say I want people to register for a seminar or something. Now, I could just create a Google form to do that. And if I'm using GoToWebinar, they have a registration form. The downside of those is, is that it doesn't give me something called Google Analytics. And what Google Analytics does, it'll tell me, did the people come from Facebook? Did they come because they typed in the URL? Did they come, what country, what, what area? Were they on a mobile device? Google Analytics will tell me about the people that went there. Now, I can't put a Google Analytic tracking into a Google form, and I can't put it into a GoToWebinar webinar registration form, but I can put it into a Google site. So if I, and I'm going to show you about a form, um, we're going to insert a form in a minute, but I can put the Google Analytics tracking code for the site in the site, and Google will give me reports on where people have come from. Let's let's add another page, and this page is going to be um, it's going to be home search, right? Home search. There we go. Now, by the way, I can change the background image for each page. the The fact that the cover and, and I can put my picture. I, I can put my I could add a picture right here. I could put in a link. Agents always want their picture, right? You know, um, I'll show you how to do that. You can put your picture right on the website. You can make your picture as big as you want it to be, right? One of the complaints agents sometimes have about company sites is they don't have their picture. Or it's not very big. It's a little tiny picture. I want a great big picture. How do I do that, right? So this is where um, I actually last year sold a house to somebody who went to that other site, right? The one that that that, that I was showing you and filled out a form. And the form that they filled out was a Google form. So when I click on insert over here, look, these are the different things. I could have put in a YouTube video, a calendar, document, slides, sheets, forms, forms. I could put in a form. What form do I want to put in? Um, I have a form here called buyer's information. And and it says find your dream home and usually what i do uh is you know i make it so it fits bigger and you know i should make that a little i i, I fuss with this stuff way too much here we go so what i did is i went into google forms and i created a form now what i'm saying here is 
tell us what you're looking for and we will set up the appropriate searches. We will do a deep dive and go beyond what you can find on Redfin and Zillow. Right? So when somebody fills this out, I am gonna look at Redfin and Zillow, but I'm also going to run my own searches and I'm also gonna be looking at new home subdivisions and notices of default and other things that might come up. Um, and the question is, can you work on this and save it and come back later? The answer is yes. This is a Google thing. This is about as user-friendly as you're gonna get. You can stop, you don't have to publish it. You can come back and do more. It automatically saves, right? So when people fill out this form, and by the way, I had a guy who filled out the form and I sold him a house in Ben Lomond last year and he just filled out the form and then I set up searches. He also, of course, was looking at Redfin and Zillow. He's an engineer, but there are certain questions. I was doing this with the credit union, so I asked him that. You don't necessarily have to, um, but I just went through all the different things that somebody might want to... Uh, all the different criteria, right? I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger just because I, 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 I'm that way, right? And so now I've embedded this form. What does that look like? Here, let me, um, well. That's what it looks like, right? Um, you know, now, one of the things you need to also understand, and that shows what it looks like on a tablet, and that shows what it looks like on a mobile device. Where do most people check their email and surf the internet? Where, what, what do they do? Do they use, I have a, a, a screen in my computer that I mean, my office is huge, right? It, it's some people, some of you have actually seen it big enough to watch uh, a, a movie. Um, most people aren't looking at a screen like that. This is a laptop. Most people are using their cell phone. So it's good to see what is this going to look like on a cell phone, right? But um, one way of avoiding the whole IDX thing is to tell people, fill out the form and let me know right, what you're looking for and then I'll help you find it. Now, I believe that in this IDX thing, which is up here someplace, here we go. Um, I have an MLS search, right? If I also, if you wanted to put an MLS search in, you would, you have to pay for this, you copy it. And by the way, this does commercial and sometimes I've thrown that in too. There's a mortgage calculator, there's a contact form, right? There's other things, but again, this isn't very difficult. It always looks like the same. If I wanted to put in an IDX, let's say down here, I would go up here to insert, embed, drop in the link, let it pull it up. There it is, insert it, and now it's inserted an IDX property search. $15 a month, and that's what that costs. $15 a month, and uh, you too can have an IDX property search on, on, on a Google site or any other website. By the way, I've done this on Wix websites, right? They have a free version, but they put a little ad that says this is, you know, it says this real estate agent is cheap and can't afford a website, so we're giving them one for free. It's, that's what it says, something like that. Um, but you can pay, it's like $40 a month. Sometimes they have sales, but you could, Wix will allow you to do this. It's really, really easy, right? If I wanted to just put in a text box, if I wanted to put in images, um, I, there's a, a bunch of presets. You kind of have to stick to them. If you want to, there's you, you, you can get a little more creative, but YouTube videos, calendars, slides, home buying seminars, you can do this. Notice how this is all starting to fill up here, right? It's all starting to fill up. What else might I want to put on it? Well, you do know, I'm sure, because you guys are a technologically sophisticated group up on, on what's going on, and I'm sure you know that you have a uh, new home subdivision, right? So when I go back here to this site, right, this is the site that I'd set up and I go to home search, notice one of the buttons says new homes. You see that new homes. So when somebody clicks on new homes, what are they going to see? There's a search widget hmm, where they can search new home subdivisions. There's words 
then there's an article which I stole, but I, I at least said where I stole it from about why you need a real estate agent to, you know, why you need it. And I gave them a backlink, right? That's what that's called. Um, and the reason I did that is I don't want a lawyer to send me an email saying you've stolen our stuff, All right? What virtually in, in the world of internet and, and search engine optimization and all of that sort of stuff, the best way to increase your ranking with Google is to have people link back to you. And so even though I've shamelessly stolen their content, I gave them the thing that they probably want the most, which is a back link to the actual page from which I stole it from. And I said who I stole it from, right? And so you're less likely to get into trouble if you do that. Well, how would you do this, right? How would you do that? What's well, complicated. So we're gonna go back here and we're going to, Oh, 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 oh. That's not that's that that's what I came from. This is Mike's site. We're going to go back here and we're going to go to pages, and we're going to create oops a new page, and we're going to call this new home, and we're going to say we're done. Now what we're going to want to do after it's been a little while since I've done this, so let me just see. What we're going to want to do is, I think this is what I used. And when I came here, upload, select image. Hmm, what did I want to do? How did I do this? Uh, then how did I do this? Well, let me just do this, embed code. All right, I'll, I'll start with that. So as I'm sure you're all aware that you have access this is the mls this is true if you're in bay east or other mls's over here it says new home source pro and when you click on that you're going to see that you too have a website for new homes right notice what this is my website right it's got that little search widget well if i wanted to do this really easily I would just, uh, I would go over here and here, myshowingsite.com, that URL, www.showingnew.com forward slash Michael Devlin is the URL to this site. So the easiest thing for me to do if I want to do new homes is go to embed URL uh, that, I don't know why it gives me two, but bam, there it is, right? And I could, you know, drag it down and, but people, they'll be able to scroll as well. There it is, got my picture, logo, search new home, save listings, they could sign in, there's a little widget. Now, um, I, I had more free time when I did this, let's just say, I had a little more free time. And so what I did, was in, in uh, that widget I recreated. And by recreating, it means when I go here to um, my showing site that, see, that's not what I want to do. I go down here to widgets. Let's see what the question is. How many MLS listings are there? I don't know. Uh, how many MLS listings there are? Um, so when I go to the, um, if I want to take my new homes search and put it in the website, I could do an iframe widget, but just a basic HTML widget, copy it, right? This is what it's going to look like. And I could go over here and let me just uh, get rid of that for now. And I can, Do the works. Come on. Come on. No, it didn't do it. All right, let's try it again. Embed code. <laughs> I always find that the framing works really well. Let's just see what if it likes that better. I don't think it does. But obviously, I got it to reach work before. Let's try this. 
and it's just not cooperating right now. I'm not entirely sure why, but um, just not entirely sure why. The easiest thing to do is the frame, right? Which is what I already showed you how to do. This is what I get for being fancy. Um, you know, usually the HTML widget, I'm obviously committed to getting this to work. All right, I don't know. Maybe I did something like this first. Uh, now nah, that doesn't look like it. So easiest thing to do, and you, most of the time I simply frame somebody else's web page, right? So for example, here I would just go back and I, all I want is that link here. I, I copy that link now that I have it. Um, I could go here, we're gonna get rid of that, get rid of it. We're going to insert by URL, insert it, go ahead, and there it is, right? Easy peasy. So a lot of the, kind. by the way, do you know how many people have gone to the site and filled out, you know, the new home search? And uh, occasionally I use this when I have clients. Because if I have a um, uh, if I have so I've asked somebody to fill out a form rather than using Redfin and Zillow, right? I've asked them rather than using an IDX. I've asked them to fill out a form. So one of the things that I would do once they fill out the form is I might look to see if there's any new homes that are available. Right now, um, I know I'm kind of running out of time, but a lot of this once you've seen we do one or two of these it's kind of easy by the way you can have pages under pages right this is a property search widget with the form underneath new homes that's when i got fancy you don't necessarily have to do that i have a real estate school uh home selling i i have the normal things i could have if you don't have any subscriptions you could just have a blog google has a free blog um, I can create a website, um, I can put my picture on it, I can do all this kind of stuff, I don't have to spend anything, right, unless I want an IDX search. Now, if you're interested, I'm going to be doing, on. I, I do classes for people that are in my coaching program or on my team or people that I'm working with, and in those sessions, I'm actually going to talk about how to generate leads. This is not necessarily a lead generating website. Right, what this website is, it's designed for when, notice how the picture is different on this than the other ones, for somebody that says, do you have a website? And I could say, yes, yeah, I got a website. Could I put on my business card, register a domain or use their domain, right? MichaelDevlin.com, I could point that domain to here, right? And then when people typed it in, they would see my website. I got a website. Um, you can make it look even fancier than this. If you go to like Fiverr, which is a site where you can get people to do stuff very cheaply, there are people that can trick out one of these sites rather easily, but there, there aren't a lot of moving parts. You can change the image, you can add other images. Um, and then uh, I'm getting some questions about how the MLS works, which we'll save to a later time. Let me just, one, one other little thing for fun, just, and then I know I've, I've gone on too long, which is normally what, what happens, right? I've gone on two homes. So I'm going to go home because I know agents want to know. I want to put my picture on my web page. Can I put my picture on the web page? And the answer is yeah, right? And so hopefully this is going to work easily. Um, uh, let me see. Um, I don't really like this picture, but Let's just see if I wanted it. Uh, I just don't know why I just don't like that picture, but I can make it smaller. And I know what you're thinking, you want it bigger, not smaller. And I could put it up here, right? You know, picture on my web page, right? I know most of you think it's not big enough. I want a great big picture. I want a great big picture on my web page. I want the picture to be the whole web page, right? That, I usually get stuff like that from agents. Um, you know, I'm not really too sure. It all depends, I guess, on what you what you look like. 
but you understand and there's a, a ton of information on how to use google sites it's a google thing you can put your picture on the website you notice how it changed the size of the banner um, in some ways that's more customizable than the web well, certainly more than the one your company may give you all right well that um, i hope that was enough ramblings about web pages i don't know if you found that at all interesting i wanted to go through what the different options were um you know usually our web pages become sort of a personal brochure on the internet right with some helpful links the only other thing that i find web pages are useful for is to have links on how to change your utilities or other stuff like that you could tell people to go to the web page but you could email them that as well um, if you're interested in internet lead generation actually generating leads from having the web page I'm going to be covering that in a series that I'm going to do for the agents that I'm coaching with. If you would like to participate, reach out to me and talk to me about how you could, you know, get involved in that. But that takes a lot more work, right? Do you understand? This didn't take me very long to set up, right? It doesn't take very long. In an hour or so, you could have a decent looking website with Google Sites. If you have joined a company that gives you one for free, you didn't do anything right other than giving your picture and, and that sort of stuff if you're interested in actually generating real estate business that requires more effort right and that means having a customer relationship management system a follow-up system lead magnets um uh, squeeze pages landing pages and i'll cover that in another class was that helpful for you guys i hope so um if not well you've hurt my feelings and uh, that's it.